Hey guys, welcome back to the test site. Here we are in the drawing board room. Uh, we're renovating certain parts of the test site right now, so that's why it kind of looks you know, like it's in shambles and a mess and, you know, like all that good stuff. But, you know, hopefully we'll have this place looking more decent within the next few videos. Uh, I'm working at uh, getting an official drawing board site, a place where we can kind of, a good old platform where we can just jump right into projects. Uh, you know a good intro kind of have something in the works there but enough about that let's get on to the main subject here we're here to discuss the stealth bike uh, back last year I did a video it did really good I think it's it's not my favorite but it's done the best out of all my videos uh, the stealth broad uh, step bike project part one I don't know how many parts are going to be but this is part two uh, main question that needs to be addressed here why did uh, part two take so long to come out well as I'm doing this channel I'm learning new things uh, you know I'm kind of doing it's a it's kind of a weird wibbly wobbly kind of I learn things as I go I feel myself learning sort of but I try and play it off as I know and instruct you guys how to do it uh, some things work some things don't uh, one thing that didn't work is later on in this video I had to refilm this part because the audio was out. The microphone did not record the way I wanted it to. I had got a new microphone, I wanted to test it. I thought it, you know, done good. Turns out the audio was crap, so I had to refilm this. Other parts I did decent, so I'm not gonna refilm that and and I have no and I can't it's one of those things where you shoot it and you can't re you know, you can't reshoot it. It's a done deal. So you might have to keep an eye on your audio, and mess, mess with that a little bit, turn up the audio to hear it better. But I wouldn't keep it if I didn't think it was good content. I think it's watchable content. Uh, but back to main reason number one why uh, it took so long for this video to come out. So I started it back in late August, uh, Stealth, Pro uh, Stealth Bike Project 1. After, right after I did it, it dropped off cold, and so I, as you know, I was in the learning, st still am, still learning, uh, I figured out my naive, un, uh, uncapable self figured out that you can't paint in cold weather. You know, uh, painting tip number one if you want to get into painting, you cannot paint in cold weather. The, the conditions need to be preferably dry and hot. It was not, neither of those two. So uh, I stepped the stage in part one, you know, we're gonna be painting this. So I stuck with it. I didn't wanna do any other add-ons. I just wanted to get to part two uh, and get it out, uh, painting it. And I was so hyped for painting. And uh, you know, I, I was still learning the mechanics of dirt bike too. So I was like, I think I can handle painting. Turns out it's a little bit more work than I thought. Uh, but uh, I had it sand down. I had the mechanical pieces wrapped up so the paint wouldn't get on it, mess it up, uh, or you know I didn't want paint getting on the engine and it not be, you know, made for that. The paint not be made for engine heat and then you know it burning the paint and the engine getting hot and it burning the paint and then it release fumes that I shouldn't be inhaling while I'm riding. Just, you know, little stuff like that. It getting paint on the chain and then it not, you know do properly and go on the sprocket and spin the sprocket all that all that good stuff so I have I had everything wrapped up in plastic that needs to be wrapped up in plastic and I have sanded down the main frame and also the wheels as well so sanding step that's step two Stand, sanding allows the paint to stick you don't want to just spray it over an already painted surface you want to sand it up, get it rough a little bit, allows the paint to stick better, gives it a more clearer, fuller look instead of being uneven or clumped up in places. It just allows it to stick on well or run in places. You know, it just allows it to stick on well and it looks great. So that's what I've done. I primed it, got rid of it for painting, got everything wrapped up, all the mechanical parts wrapped up in plastic. The whole frame was sanded down and it was ready to rock and roll. Then it turned off cold. So I waited, and now here we are, summertime. So we're out, and we're out and about, and ready to get uh, this thing started. We're gonna paint the gas tank, we're gonna paint it all. 
and it won't even look like the same bike after we're done with it. But I'm going to see, uh, I've done a little bit of filming from here and there, so I'm going to might add in a little snippet here and work some movie magic of, you know, before and after. So we're going to see what it looked like before I applied the paint, and then, you know, with the snap of my finger, it'll look like after. So I'm going to pause just for a minute and let me, give me some time to work some of that movie magic in and give the uh, before. Now we're back to the after, and uh, so and here in this next clip, we're going to get into painting it. Uh, again, you might have to work the audio, but I think you're going to like it. Uh, we're also going to talk some more about paint. Uh, we're going to address the pattern and something that I want to try. I haven't tried it yet. I don't know how it's going to work, but we'll discuss that too. And, you know, whether it was a, a fail or a success. And with the snap of my finger, some magic will happen, and I will be painting my bike. Alright, so we got the bike, uh, got some plastic thrown over the bike. Because uh, earlier there was a storm rolling in, and I wanted to protect the paint, but we have the back part of the frame. Paint it up, if you'd like to see. Hang on a second. That's where we're at so far. A nice battleship gray right there. I think it's coming along good. Haven't made it to the swing arm yet. I decided before I uh, touch the swing arm, I'm going to remove, I'm going to empty and remove the gas can. And I'm also going to remove the front fender, which is what we're, I'm working on right now. If you want to remove the front fender of a TTR or Yamaha 225 90s model, you are going to want to take a 10 millimeter socket with any size wrench and you're going to I'm going to get these bolts right here where it's an old bike two of them stone fell out but I'm going to remove these two that's what I've been working on I'm going to remove those two and uh, then the fender should pop right off sorry about that guys I had to readjust the camera but along with the uh, 10 millimeter socket I used a deep well all that means is it's just like an elongated socket. Um, for those of you who don't work on cars, like if it's a hard place to get up into, like here, just makes it a little bit easier. So, I'm gonna get these two bolts off, and this fender should pop right off, and then it'll be ready to be uh, painted. And I'm uh, still, as I addressed in the last video, getting used to this uh, tripod. So bear with me if the angles are a little odd. I gotta. The more I use it, the better I'll get at it, but the more I'll know what looks good and what doesn't. And there's my fender. Just came off for the most part. As soon as I get done uh, taking it off, this might go in my bloopers reel. As soon as I get done taking it off, I'll show you guys. So we got the fender prepped and ready. Dried it off and clean it off, and now we're going to apply the same paint as I did the uh, back of the frame that I showed you earlier, that battleship gray. That's going to be the standard default color, as I'm going to call it. It's going to be the base coat. It's just gray primer. And uh, that's probably going to be the primary color of the stealth bike. It's just that flat gray. We'll go more into paint later on in the video, but this is going to be the main body of the paint. I'm going to touch up and do some other colors and, maybe, and work on a pattern afterwards. But first, we just want to get that flat gray body of paint on it right here so let's have at it nothing to be afraid of just when you paint quick tip stand a little bit back and kind of just lightly mist over it just mist over it like that nothing to it and then it does the rest for you pretty much so if you get too close and see I'm not a paint expert but you know your basic tip it's like your beginner's novice guide if you get too close then the paint will just run it'll it'll group up and it'll run but if you missed it on there it'll just hit it and stick so you see it starting to turn that we're definitely nowhere near close but you see it starting to turn that battleship gray that I had the uh, 
the back of the frame. And this is just going to be our, uh, it's just going to be our standard default, our body. And then we're going to put, later on, we'll discuss more about paints and I'll, I'll get us a little uh, design board and, and figure out, you know, what kind of pattern we're going to want to go over this. Again, this is just the main body of it. And this is going to be the main primary color of the bike, but it's going to, it's going to definitely have a bit of a pattern to it. And there you go, that's the final result of our fender. And again, we'll get more into paint later, but that's the main body. That's our main standard default color. And I'm going to get more into, uh, you know, what else we'll do with it. We're going to pick out a pattern, and then we're going to let that be the main body, and then add some more paint onto it. And like I said, talking about the blemishes there, you can see you can't, like, you can't clean that off it just is it's there but uh hope you like it i think it's coming along very nicely got that nice battleship gray kind of color and there's going to be more done to it here shortly but that's what we're working with right now all right so now i think that we're at a good stopping point we'll have one more of these in uh, this clip as we wrap things up we're going to discuss two things uh, which are pretty important here. So we're going to discuss the pattern of the bike because I've finally come up with an idea of the pattern that I want and reasons why and uh, then we'll test it, see how it looks because, you know, that's what we do here on this channel. Uh, and uh, But right here we're going to get into it and discuss that. Uh, point number two that I want is the color choice. I want to talk about that for a minute. I'm going to hold up the pattern and see what you think here in a minute. But before we do that, this is important that we discuss is the color choice and the natures of the color that I am painting this bike. All right, as you've seen, it's flat black and it is flat gray. So, those are great colors, awesome stealthy colors, everything you'd kind of think that a stealth bike would be. Uh, the gray is the reason for the gray and the reason for the flat black so i think in my opinion and you can argue this but in my opinion those are the most prominent colors in the woods you got the tree bark you got the branches gray the shadows they cast black i might have a little bit of in, a hints of uh, flat green in there but not much uh we're going to, plus it's just a dull color i think that your mind has been trained you know brighter colors pop out and they'll grab your attention more where it's like a gray you're, it, it's 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 just gray it's bland it's bland it's not something out of the ordinary it's common it just kind of floats on by and you don't pay no attention to it gray is an unnoticeable color you don't lock on you know try and think back if you will just try and uh, use your imagination a little bit and uh, you're, or you know, just go back through your memory and be like, when is when is the time where I've ever locked on and really noticed and I'm amazed at the shade of a gray? No, you don't. It's just one thing that doesn't flip the switch and get your attention. It just kind of blends in and goes on by. So that's why I chose gray for the step bike. You know, just kind of a low key, under the radar kind of unnoticeable color, but it looks good when you're if you're looking for it. Now on with the fun stuff enough blabbering on it's time to get into the pattern I want to do a pattern like this I want it to have those kind of a little less a little less uh, prominent the swirls but almost like stripes almost like waves of just gray black you got your main body paint the gray and the black I know this is not this is not gray and this is not black <laughs> but I need you to use your imagination here and I've got a you know if you look at a map that maps have keys I got a key right here this right here is the black the scribbled in that right there I need you to imagine that it's just that flat gray and then just you got gray black gray black and these stripes in between I think I want to do a darker shade of gray it might just be where it's late at night, but I was scribbling it down, and I shifted my eyes just a little bit, and then it disoriented. I was like, what in the world? It, it made me have a hard time locking it on. No, not so much. I tested it on my brother, and he's like, I don't think so. I don't think you got anything here. But 
you know, I'm, I'm going to make these stripes not so small. They're going to be a whole lot bigger, just a whole lot fatter st uh, stripes um, on over the bike. And the whole bike's just going to look like that. Just flowing stripes. Just fl uh, flat gray, flat black. Flat gray, flat black. With almost like a small little pinstripe in between them just to kind of maybe hopefully just, you know, orientate you a little bit. If it don't work, it don't work, though. You know, no harm, no foul. Uh, th but they're going to be fatter, and it's just going to have like that kind of whip to it, the stripe wheel. Uh, what inspired me was kind of the, uh, the Viet, if you, you, you know, you can Google it right now, Vietnam camo pattern. I just wanted to do kind of mainly something like that with maybe a little bit more of a whip into the stripe, and then the stripes be fatter. So, you know, there we are. We've covered the pattern. We've covered the thing that we want to test here um, on the bike. And so I think that'll wrap it. I'm going to hit the snap and work some movie magic. And we're going to get back into painting because uh, that's what we really all came here to see. And then uh, another snap and we'll have the finished product. And then we'll know if the what I wanted to test works or not. We'll clear coat act as armor will it take away from the flatness of the color all that good jazz so you're probably wondering what we're doing and what looks like the setup of a crime scene here with all this plastic draped over everything well sad to say we've ran out of uh warm weather fall is upon us and uh so it's no longer a good climate to be painting in luckily we was able to get a uh, one of the areas of the test site a uh, spare room cleaned out and that's what we're going to be using here is this spare room for our controlled climate to help us paint. You've also probably noticed in the background that uh, we've come a bit ways from the last uh, clip before this was uh, all this is being shot. We've now got the, hang on, I'll move the camera in just a second. Here we go, walk with me here. We now have the two fork springs painted. Handlebars were already painted. It was always uh, black and uh, black handlebars, and then the rest was like a shiny blue or a or a dirt blue since it's a dirt bike. <laughs> but uh, we have the uh, back painted right over here, and what we will be working on this evening here in just a minute is the swing arm. I have to sand down this, and I'm going to apply another coat to where it'll be stronger against the elements and it won't peel and chip and, and there'll be runs and uneven it'll help it have a more even look and flow to it I'm going to be sanding that down with uh, some 180 sandpaper I'm going to be taking a more rougher uh, grade to the swing arm down here and you'll also notice yes the rear wheel's gone we also took off the front wheel for the uh, to paint the fork springs the uh, I plan on painting them but I want to do them separate as a, a as a thing of their own so uh what we're uh, going to be doing is yeah we're going to be painting the uh, swing on right here and uh we had to remove the rear wheel so we could get back in there and the more nooks and crannies because i want it to be even don't want there to be uh spots missing stuff like that uh and later on i'll show you how to remove the front and the back wheel for paint I wouldn't be intimidated by it. Yeah, I got the chain hanging up right here. All I had to do was pull it off the sprocket. And uh, so we'll go over that later on right now. Uh, just trying to get painting knocked out. But I'll show you the rest uh, later on. So let's get to sanding though first. We're going to sand down that swing arm. So here's what we're working with. I know it don't look like much, but I've got it taped down. It's a layered process. Again, I know it doesn't look like much, but when we take this off, you're going to be able to see a very well camo pattern. And uh, it's not hard. Don't be intimidated by it. All I did was take a piece of cloth. 
I cut out a pattern in it, and then I overlapped it over what I wanted to paint. And you can do this too, and you don't have to do the pattern I did. I did a Vietnam stripe jungle pattern. We discussed it. Uh, you could cut out any design you want to, and then you just drape it over as so, and then we're going to paint. Uh, and then this part, the parts that the cloth covered, will remain black, and the parts that don't, it's going to get that gray jungle striped uh, design. And here's the final result for the gas tank. And that's what it looks like when you do that. And you're wondering, how do you get these little marks right here? All I did was this number right here. Hang on. I'll get you the sheet that we used. You see where we sprayed it? After we did that, which wasn't hard, stretched it over it, taped it down. There you go. I sprayed it. And that was almost mainly the end result. How we got these little marks down right here. Spray that. Like that. And it just catches that. And that's what's left there and adds that little effect right there. there you can see. And then where we taped it. And if you do the same you do this design. You'll find little areas right here where the tape catches. And it'll just be like a rectangle. And uh, we want it to have like a little bit more of a less less shape, more like have a natural flow to it. So uh, cut that right out like that. And I'd go around to the, each individual little places where the rectangles were from where this tape held on the net that I'd cut out to get the spray for that, for the pattern. And there would be just little rectangles here. And that adds almost like a nice little jagged tiger stripe tree branch woodland flow right there. So, and if you want to check our progress, here's what we got so far. I told you, yeah, we got the Fork Springs painting. I'm thinking about hand painting this right down here. Goes great with the gas tank, I think. It's really starting to come along. And we got that, the solid gray in the back. I'm going to do some uh, nice little black stripes flowing on the back. Put the seat on. Put the rear wheel on. We'll be ready to rock and roll. We'll be set. So we got the back and the front finished. And now for the last part, we got to do the swing arm. Right down here. And then we're going to have this project wrapped up for the uh, the painting portion of it. So, hope you've enjoyed it so far. Get to see it in action. Break this ah, rag right over here. We're not going to tape it down so, this time since it's like such a small piece. Just going to leave it as is. Can't make up my mind, sorry. Like that, that's more stripey like. here see it'll make that stripe it'll give it that stripey look there you go see that see how that works I'll drape that over there I 
There you go. And we are done. So this is the finished project of the step bike. I'm going to take a walk around so y'all can, can see. Please post in the comments what you think. Let me know if it was worth all the wait or did I take too long to do something that wasn't really all that impressive. Uh, I'm definitely uh, all ears for constructive criticism. Please post in the comments. I really want to hear what you guys think. Uh, I'm, I'm, I love it. I'm happy with it. I poured my heart and soul out into it, but uh, you know, there's always room for uh, improvement. So if there's something that you've seen I could have done better, please let me know. Yeah, I still got to finish painting that. But other than that, it's ready, and I'm going to be hitting the trails today. Um, I, I, I'm very impressed with our uh, pattern that we discussed. I'm glad that it came out the way it did. Um, we have it flows perfectly along with the. Uh, the woodland backdrop and I think it's going to make a great stealthy little low-key trail bike uh, this isn't it's not finished complete I still have a couple more add-ons but as far as paint goes it's finished uh, it's running fine now enough chit chat let's hit the trails also I hope you like a little modification I did there <laughs> 